Jidwa, right? Yeah. Jidwa. I love your name. Approximately 10 hours later. <laughs> Pauline Jidwa. Okay. That's cool. Know, that's cool, cool. Cool. Welcome to another episode of Work in Progress. I'm your host, Archum, and today we have Pauline Jidwa. Did I pronounce that well enough? Yeah, that was perfect. My my French is pretty non-existent, so <laughs> you have to give me credit for this. You have to excuse my accent, my French accent as well. So yeah, it's so I good. A beautiful accent, I love it. So, uh, Pauline, t- tell tell everyone about yourself and your uh, business, Millimeter Architecture. Um, so I'm French, as you just said. Um, I'm an architect, a qualified architect for over ten years. Um, I used to work for really big firms like the Adid, um, Aidas. Um, I lived in Hong Kong for over 10 years, moved wow. to the UK. Yeah. Um, How was that? Yeah, that was, that, was, that was amazing, actually. Like, I originally went for four years, you know, just yeah. like right after my diploma, I packed my stuff. I had no job, no flats, nothing. Like, let's go. And um and got a job at Aidas actually. So, wow. and um, the four years ended up being 10. <laughs> so, and then I moved to the UK and um, say no job, nothing, just restarted from scratch and got a job at Zara. So it was, uh, it was quite, quite good as well. And, um, and so a bit more than a year ago, I decided to start uh, millimeter architecture because I wanted to work. Uh, for myself, um, for many different reasons, uh, more to, to have more freedom, to organize my own time, etc. Um, I had a few extension projects, but this is not what I really wanted to do. Um, I wanted to focus on interior design more and interior architecture. So remodeling, internal space, helping people with a special layout, um, because and not like only like uh, interior decorator, you know, like a lot of interior design company are only decorator. But I mean, like if we want to, if you have like um, part like walls that you want to get rid of, like uh, to rethink completely the layout of your flat or stuff like that. That uh, that's what I'm I'm doing as well. Of of course, like to the to the final design where we pick up the furniture, the paint, or the finishes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, so this is what I've been doing, and um, and actually it has uh, picked up quite well. Actually, in the past few months, where I really focus on on this um, interior design, um, yeah. and uh, I'm doing both online and on site. Which has uh, with the lockdown, the online has just like uh, completely went crazy. Actually, <laughs> so it's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. So tell us about the ongoing work you have right now. So what, what do you have and what you've been doing the last couple of months? Um, so I uh, so I, I was I work both on, on a project in France, obviously, uh, remotely and um, and in the UK. Um, I've been also I also got in touch with people in uh, in Amsterdam actually. Someone got in touch with me for a project Brilliant. in Amsterdam that might be happening a bit later this year. So that's um, that's really good. And so um, I finished a project in France, which was uh, quite tricky because it was really awkward shape um, uh, flat. It was like a bit of a triangular shape, uh, mm-hmm. building from the seventies, um, quite small, uh, only twenty square meter. And um, has never been done since the 70s. So like basically like absolutely horrendous. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the clients, they wanted to um, incorporate in that space uh, four sleeps, um, a full bathroom with a full bath, um, a proper kitchen with a full fridge, all this in, in 20 square meter, full of storage. Um, this yeah. is the French Alps. It's for, um, for their holiday, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. And um, so I worked on that, and um, and actually, like I did, like I did many layout options, and I think like working for for companies like Zara, where you know, like the shape of the building are really always really interesting, and um, and so you need to like I think I have a lot of practice in playing around with awkward shape um, layouts. Um, and so I, I present them like few options and like they were really happy and then I'm like, okay, fine. This is what I want. I want to move in now. <laughs> like you just need to have it built. Uh, so that's with start construction, um, in May, cause they need to wait for the end of the season. 
Right. Uh, so, uh, so hopefully I will get photos by the end of the summer. So that would be great. And then I just finished another project, which was a two bed. Um, there was no layout, uh, special layout revision on this one. It was mainly interior design, but it was uh, to find a, a current um, um, interior design through all the rooms, like the, the kitchen had to be rethink as well a little bit. There was some plumbing problem and electric problem, electrical problem as well. Uh, that uh, we discovered after the previous owner did really weird stuff like uh, conceal the boiler, um, the sockets were not um, in the wall. It was it was it was so a lot a lot of <laughs> DIY stuff where the the owners didn't want to spend much money on the contractor, so they done it themselves, eh? Oh my god, it was horrendous. Yeah, there, exactly. There, there was actually a horrible case here in UK. Uh, I think it was four weeks ago. Uh, so there was uh, some pub that was lacking maintenance, and then there was some old chap, a uh, friend of the uh, pub's owner. So he went to fix the electricity, <gasps> and then um, so obviously he wasn't a qualified electrician. Mm -hmm. So he done something incorrectly. And I think the following weekend, um, the families came in, and there was loads of kids playing. And apparently the, the, the kids sat on one of the light fittings that wasn't grounded. And oh, unfortunately, that, that was the end of it. And then so this this, this person is actually, you know, uh, going to court for manslaughter. So it, it's like, uh, I don't think a lot of people understand what they're playing. Yeah. It's, it's literally playing yeah, quiet. Totally. And I think a lot of people are absolutely not aware of this. And um, and I mean, I discovered, I had this in a in a project in London actually for a kitchen and um, the kitchen looked fine you know from outside etc it looks like it was done properly um, and then when we got rid of the tiles of the backsplash then we discovered the, the electricity of the socket behind and we were like wow like this is so lucky that this flat didn't take fire before like it's Crazy. absolutely insane you know and um, and people are not aware of this they are not aware that uh, you need even if you add a socket you need a certificate and i think like people are are missing a lot of knowledge about that and how serious that can be as you, as you just mentioned mm. and uh, and i think um yeah i think I, I am really careful about this because i really don't want to get in any trouble i mean yeah. uh, health and safety right and in terms of uh, what we said that uh, you had obviously you work in in, in in france and amsterdam and obviously before you worked in hong kong so that, that's that's the beauty of obviously having the internet and obviously uh, your line yeah. of work you can actually do things where you don't have to be at the location right so you can yeah, exactly. with with today's technology you can sort of you know you can kind of be there and, and see mm -hmm. what you need to see and then still design and, and especially what you do so if, if you know that if you have a floor plan and then it's not it's not a regular rectangle for example and like you said you know triangles and all that kind of stuff so it, it's more of a creative flow isn't it it's like you need to sit down close your eyes and kind of like try to visualize how things work yeah totally yeah totally for and um yeah i yeah, know exactly and which was like was quite, quite amazing with this project because the client were actually in the french uh, caribbean the project yeah. is located in the french alps and I was located in London. <laughs> so I was just You should like, have gone though. You should have you should have, yeah. you should have said, taken the opportunity to go there. I was like, ah, you know what? I, I, I can't really tell. I can't put I, I, I can't put my finger on it. I have to come. I have to yeah. enjoy a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, exactly. design it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no exactly well hopefully i will go like uh, i will go like, like this summer um at least because uh like this we can uh, double check all the dimension because like the, the shape was so awkward anyway that mm -hmm. it would be super important to um to fine tune the before it actually start um the construction there yeah. um yeah and then in the upcoming project i have um a living room uh design coming up uh, next week, uh, which is going to be really nice. It's a mid-century one, and I'm actually going on site, which is good because it's good to work from home. But like, I'm also really looking forward to go back on on proper site project, you know. <laughs> See so. some other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like just feeling like turning around in my flat. You know? It's like, oh. Yeah, you know, like before March of last year, a lot of people were, you know some people complain oh too many people too many this too many that and after the lockdown of two months some people that were coming back into our building for example they were literally just ah oh, talk to me yeah. kind of thing you know i just want to i just want to you know have a conversation and and, and have a, another human being and literally i've met this guy in a canteen 
uh, on the seventh floor of our building, and he, and he was like, you know, had the big, big, wide eyes, just like, <laughs> oh man, how's it going? I haven't seen you in so long. Like, tell me about your life. It's like we never speak. Why? <laughs> Why do you want to? Yeah. But it's so true. You know, like, <laughs> it's it's so true. Yeah. yeah, no, no. But this, I think, I think we all miss this, uh, this human connection. I think it's extremely important. You know, um, yeah. And in our job as well, the online design, it's, it's, it's amazing for um, a lot of jobs. It's, it's super doable, but there are, there are some jobs that you need to be, to be there. You need to talk with the contractor because the communication is, is super important for the project to, to, go, to go smoothly as well. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. And in terms of your service, obviously you, you provide design. So do you do all the, the, the drawings, like suggestions for furniture and decorations yeah. and all that kind of stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I do all the, the furniture layout, uh, finishes layout. I, I would provide um, electrical plans as well, uh, plumbing if there is any needed. Um, when, like for, for kitchen and bathroom, I I tend to to rather do that on site because uh, there is so many things that you discover when the when the 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 bathroom yeah, or the kitchen is uh, is is removed, you know, <laughs> and then you're yeah. like, okay. So you need to yeah. adapt. Uh, um, so I think it's important to have a professional eyes. And as we said before, um, most of the people have no clue. No, of- not really. <laughs> of any regulation or anything, yeah, you know, they're like, yeah. oh yeah, we can just get rid of this. No, not really, guys. <laughs> Can't yeah. really just do that. Let's just, you know? let's just remove all the walls so it's all yeah. flat without any steelwork whatsoever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And 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 even when you you add steel, like sometimes even if it's only internal, sometimes you still need to go through party wall agreement. You know, if you're in a in a semi detached house, for example, and like yeah. you need to add steel, like you still need to have an agreement with your neighbors. So, and absolutely, I think yeah, and I think a lot of people have have no idea. No, not really. I mean, it's it's just you know it's government law and regulations, and people are sort of you know they rely on their architects, designers, mm. contractors to 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 um, tell them and, and inform yeah. them what they need to do. So otherwise, you know, but uh, in the, at the end of the day it is their responsibility. So it puts them in a tough spot because if yeah. you know, if the if the professionals surrounding them are not that great and they didn't say anything, so okay. they'll be still in the hot water. So, you know, it's 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 a yeah, best it's yeah, it's really yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. In, in terms of the, the the furniture and things like that do you do you shop around in specific shops or is it like every customer sort of you know in um like unique unique designs unique furnitures um so i'm not doing eye luxury things so I, i'm doing best pop design as, as well but uh, so this would be done uh, mostly by joiner and like uh, then i sort the samples and stuff i just finished like a, a, a best pop design for a headboard actually that's going to be quite cool um but in terms of furniture um and finishes uh yeah like all, of course like all the the, the, the well-known brand like west elm made.com ampm um but it's also depend of how fast the, the clients needs because like with brexit and with the lockdown actually some tend to be quite um, a long lead time mm. um so you need to be careful about this so like you, you need to adapt with what's the client once if they want something fast, like you, you will probably will have to go to Dunham or, or Wayfair because you know that they have like a lot of stocks and like they will be able to provide quite fast. If they tend to be okay to wait a bit longer, then like you can go for the brand and stuff. Um, for features, I like uh, do, dosing, dos, sorry, my English, <laughs> dosing and Reynolds. <laughs> Your English is really good. Don't worry about yeah. that. Okay, um, I have like for kitchen. I have an account with the audience, and like they are great because uh, they are they are just, they can supply quite fast as well. Um, but I also worked with Mobalpa, which is French kitchen. Um, okay. In in the UK, though, the reason why I work with them is because they tend to have um, um, cabinet dimension that are not uh, available in other like audience or. Ren or, or those those uh, those Kitchen brands, tools, yeah. yeah. Because like their 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 um, their base unit are are taller, basically. I mean, like the plinth is smaller, so like you gain much more storage. So for small kitchen, if the client is willing to pay a little bit more and wait a bit longer because the lead time is at least twelve weeks, yeah. um, they are they can be a really great option. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And, and in terms of value for money, that would be 
what what would be your advice? Would it be just essentially looking for the same item uh, from multiple suppliers? Would that be the best probably advice? Um, yeah, you, you you can compare. Like I always like it's always really important, really, really interesting to compare from different suppliers because it's true that you can find um, some item like who are sold like with really different prices uh, depending on the supplier. It's also important to I think estimate your your quantity that you mm. need because if you tend to order but either too much then you it's a waste completely but if you don't order enough then like you need to reorder and then like it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money because for delivery cost etc it's not really efficient you know yeah um, you also have um the possibility to do hacks um i just did one actually for a project uh with ikea cabinets base units um and then like you just buy uh, doors there is like a lot of companies now who does like doors that fits those type of cabinet yeah. but who are a bit more like a bit more trendy yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I heard that before and we actually we, 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 we did that as well I, I think that's an amazing thing because like if you're gonna go for everything bespoke like for example i think it was hyatt kitchens i think mm -hmm. so that the, their kitchen was thirty thousand, but the base units were very very similar to like howden's or ren or whatever yeah. So it's like so essentially the the customer was paying for the the fronts and for the yeah. workshop. So I thought it was like crazy uh, overpriced. Yeah, no, totally. It's it's and it's it's really often this because I mean like there is not much much that you can do in reinventing like a base unit. It's a it's a it's a base unit. You know, yeah. it's just a carcass. So like just go for like a, a standard carcass and then like put a little bit more money in a really nice front and then like you have like a. a a, a semi bespoke uh, kitchen or or wall unit uh, mm. for like a, a third or or half of a, a full bespoke design. I think. Mm -hmm. While we're on the subject of kitchens, uh, we actually had a, a story on our uh, page where yeah. we, we essentially wanted people to ask <laughs> uh, some questions, and we had when we had uh, plenty. So one of which was, "What are your kitchen design no nos?" Okay. So, and, that, and that was and that was by London House Makeover. Just a shout out. To okay. Like makeover. <laughs> okay. Uh, no one knows. Um, like so, the first first step anywhere for any design it's your layout. Be careful. Like never uh, forget about the work triangle in kitchen. You know, it's like this is quite well known now. Like between the prep, the cleaning, and this, the um, the cooking, and um, there is certain dimension to respect. So like really um, make sure that your your layout works properly uh, don't try to overcrowd your kitchen you know it, like most of like a lot of people are really tempted to um, fit a kitchen island just because they see this in so many photos yeah. everywhere because everybody wants a kitchen yeah. island but at some point you need to be realistic with the space you have you can't like if you can't have a kitchen island and a dining table maybe uh, think of what's the best for your lifestyle. If you are, if you have children, if you have family, it's probably better to have a proper full dining table. If you're Absolutely. just a young um, a couple, you know, like maybe a kitchen bar is enough, you know, like it. So this is really important. Um, leaving the lighting for the last people tend to completely forget about the lighting, but mm -hmm. in the kitchen, if you have shadows, if you can't see what you are prepping, this is crap. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you need to have task light. You need to have softer lighting for uh, yeah. for where you have your 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 dinner. Think of like putting lighting in there. Your cabinets. Um, they are they are great task lighting. Um, then the other thing like underestimate your storage. Um, I cook a lot, so I have a lot of <laughs> lot of thing in my in my kitchen. What do you so, cook? What oh do you my cook? God, everything. I really? cook French. I cook Asian. Yeah, I lived in Asia for so long, so yeah, I cook a lot actually. Everything. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Then my my partner is like, no, I'm getting fat. You know? <laughs> 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure. I'm sure he does. If he doesn't uh, uh, say say no to your uh, yeah. you know, to your cooking, that, that's, exactly. That would be difficult, right? If 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 your wife is a great cook, that's like you know. Yeah. <laughs> on, on one hand, it's amazing. On the other hand, yeah, you're getting fat really quickly. Yeah, you just need to have the gym reopening soon, and then it's fine. It's all tip. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it's funny that you were you were uh, talking about the task lighting and things like that. We actually had customers before where they buy the kitchen, they they have the appliances and everything else, 
um and and sort of you know when when it's all installed they're like hmm you know i thought there would be more lighting like like you said task lights or led mm. lights or something yeah. or, or lights in the cupboards you know when you open the doors yeah. like, you know so there's not and they're like oh can, can we install these i was like yeah well you can but now we need to run new wires and stuff yeah no exactly and it, it needs to be planned ahead and like i think it's something that people tend to forget and uh, and this is part of the design stage i think and mm. and people when they think about kitchen they just think about the unit it and the uh, box splash and that's it yeah um, and it's much more than or than only this one it's um yeah so the, yeah. the lighting yeah. is like really for me it's number two after your your spatial layout then the lighting then like don't underestimate your storage um as much as i love floating shelves and um and when i can incorporate them i do but if your kitchen is, is small then um, you need to be realistic and 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 put some closed closed uh, cabinet because you don't want to have your kitchen look clutter all the time. You know, it's like it's just then it's not really aesthetic and um, yeah. and uh, and also use the full height of your walls like really often. And you know, like the, the the upper above the upper cabinet, there is a big void that is not used and it's a bit of a waste of space. And I think this is really important to use the full heights. Um, then design wise, uh, be careful with the trend. Um, it's always really tempting to just follow the trend, but a kitchen is not something that you redo every three years. You know, it's not like a, a bedroom. You can just repaint and yeah. change your carpet and change your mm -hmm. bed and it's fine. It's like, it's, it's much more expensive. So, um, what I always suggest is that, um, keep something like not completely plain or like white, you know, it's a bit boring, but um, keep it a bit natural and simple. And then I just pop up with um, accessories for colors and materials. So like this, um, you will, you will don't, you, you won't get bored instead of like going for like a bright red kitchen, for example, you know, and yeah, uh, think, absolutely. <laughs> this is a, yeah. And then like the last thing will be a busy uh, a splashback. Um, don't go too crazy with that. If you want to have like a pattern or something, I would just suggest to have the pattern, but like maybe stay monochrome, like just stay in one one tone, one color. So like this as well, um, that would be more timeless and uh, your kitchen will last 10 years because this is roughly the time that you redo your kitchen. Yeah, I say. yeah. Well, I think it's a very good answer. So th thanks uh, London House Makeover for the question. Uh, yeah. let, let's move along with the rest of it. Um, in yeah. terms of inspiration, wh where do you draw inspiration? Do you sort of go to like uh, sites like Pinterest or Instagram, or do you go to like through through magazines and stuff? How, how do you I do. It's actually, yeah, I, I do. I do. I'm, I'm still the old school type. I think yeah. as well. I go through magazines. Um, still, I still love like going through magazines. Um, I actually, when we were able to walk around. I was actually getting um, inspiration, like in a lot of um, a lot of things. Like even like you know, you go to a nice restaurant, and there is like a little detail you like, um, a pub, a bar, um, anything. Sometimes it can even be like fashion, you know, like you see a yeah. nice pattern, and you say, oh yeah, th this would be cool, you know, for a cushion or something. Or um, so yeah, traveling as well was a massive um, inspiration when I was able to do it. Yeah. Uh, but um, I I always have my my camera with me. I mean, like my phone now. But um, and I take photos of everything. Like each time I see something, I like I'm like I'm taking photos like after cool. everything. Yeah. So and yeah. then I just I just scroll through it and I'm like, oh yeah, this I remember this and that. So yeah. Yeah. So essentially, the world is your inspiration. Yeah, but yeah. because I think you can find inspiration in anything. Of course, I think you just need to be inspired for that, right? So if you're not yeah. inspired, then you're not gonna, you know, you're gonna just see everything in grey kind of thing, yeah. right? Shapeless. The other, yeah, the other day we passed by in car, like in you know, the the building itself was not really that aesthetic, but I don't know, there was like a really cool juxtaposition of like pink, light pink ties with a really old green. Um, and rail and then like some um really rough concrete and i'm like oh that's really cool and i just took a photo and i still have it in my phone and i remember it and i'm like oh yeah that was a cool yeah. kind of pattern you know yeah yeah absolutely i mean that that's that that's the way you do it i would imagine yeah 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 that's cool that's really cool uh, in terms of um builders and and how you deal with them so do, do you get involved with builders and like what, yeah. what what are the upsides downsides that you normally get to experience with them um, yeah, I do. I do get uh, get uh, a lot with builders actually um, for on-site project when I do the follow-up. Um, um, 
I think what is really important is communication. I think this is key um, mm. because the problem only arise if you don't communicate, if you don't um, give the ID properly. Um, I tend to detail as much as I can through drawings because I think this is the thing that speaks the best um, with notes and stuff. Um, before starting a project, having a little um, brief with them to make sure that everything is clear, trying to establish a schedule. Um, and I think it, it goes well as long as they see that you know what you're talking about. Mm. I think it's, it's, also, it's also the key, as well as sometime they don't know what they're doing and you need to, to step in, you know? Um, yeah. They'll so, pretend that they know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, well, it's a drawing. How how hard could it be? And then you know what they follow is completely different, or like an old revision, or or or, or something else entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. So, and I think it's important to have like um, uh, regular checkups and um, not to live too long in between in between side visits. You know, because like the sooner you catch something uh, that was misunderstood or whatever, then like you either have a chat face to face if, if they are here, if not, like you just have a quick call and then um, always, always, always send an email and recap that because you yeah. need to have everything written um, because you need records, you know, like your own words are not going to be enough. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really important. Yeah. And then obviously if you, if you sort of kind of stop them or make, or make a comment early on, then that, that means that it's going to cost, less for them as well to to put it right right okay. so, so if, totally so so if anything you're doing them a favor obviously a, a lot of builders don't see it that way they're just like oh we'll stop meddling in our business kind of thing you know i'm, I'm yeah. sure you experienced that in, in in the past where the builders can be like that right oh yeah yeah uh, no, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah all the time <laughs> no 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 not all the time no actually like uh, let's say like 90 percent of the time i had i had great relationships so like you know like i'm like yeah just i had one that was really um painful let's see um and to be honest i will never never work with them again like i mean that's it's it's for sure uh they they pretended to be or like they show to be really professional and um uh, they were not the cheapest like they, they they were like having a schedule manager project manager blah 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 etc etc so you're like ah, oh, you know quite a big firm they seems to be organized and then um they, they, they didn't show up on time um which is i think the first uh thing Red to do flag, yeah <laughs> yeah and the thing is that the problem was not the the, the builders themselves i mean like the, the staff like the worker the, the worker were great i mean like the quality of the job that they were doing was really good right um but the management was absolutely horrendous like so those poor guys they were arriving on site with no idea of what they had to do. Mm. And you're like, this has been explained like 10 times with the supposedly manager um, to the point that uh, they, they arrived on site with no material. Nice. So, so they arrive at 9 a.m. and then have to go to the shop and then come back at, at 1 p.m. And you're like, uh, excuse me, but uh, how does that work? I'm like, do you go to the hairdresser and then wait for their hairdresser to go and buy his scissors? I mean, it's that's a good comparison. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was and it was like they were like yeah, and I spoke with the the, the 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 worker and I was like and they were all super nice and they really did really really a great job in the end. Mm. But for me, it was extremely painful because I had to chase uh, at their office all the time because they were like, oh, you want to see what we receive when we arrive on site? This is this. And like, they basically just had two lines. You need to go to this address and you need to paint the wall. And you're like, uh, excuse me, but uh, no. <laughs> that's not enough. <laughs> no, that's not, and, and, and they are the one who have to deal with the people on site, yeah. not the people in their office. So that, that was, um, there was. So I, th I think it's just going, going back to what you said, you know, communication is number one, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's exactly, you know, what, what not to do so where where the, the, the team on site are amazing and then the management is sort of you know slacking and and they're not yeah. they, they, they can't pull their weight properly yeah exactly it's just a disappointment uh, on that on, on that on, on that occasion and yeah. especially because the guys are good you know if, if the whole company would, would be bad you know fine you know that yeah. that'd be 
that, that would be probably less less bad, I would say. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. But so it's I mean, I mean it, 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 it's good. It's good that you said that overall your experience with contractors is is positive. So that that's good. That you know, the, you know, good builders are out there. It's just a matter yeah. of obviously vetting them and making sure they are who they say they are, and then. Yeah. Before take but the when you find a good builder, it's like gold, you know. Like nobody <laughs> wants to share their, their builders because you're like, no, it's for me. <laughs> yeah. Then they are too busy, you know. Like and you know, you know that guys. Like you are busy. Like you, you are like one of the the the, the trade that that, that works really, uh, like who is really busy at the moment as well. So, um, yeah, it's like gold. <laughs> Keep them. Absolutely. I mean, the relationships and companies that you know it means a lot. And you know, yeah. if you can trust someone to do a job and you know they're going to do a good job then yeah i mean it's 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 good for business it's good for relationships it's good for your mental health not to repeat yeah. yourself 20 times a day and then and, and expect something basic and they can't deliver so yeah you just take away all the frustration and then if you can trust the builder then it's just like okay well steven or whatever you know go go get it done and then they just sort of you know from from uh, uh, a little sentence they just get everything done right and you don't need to so it is exactly. very very valuable it's extremely valuable and, and yeah in our business same thing you know if we can work with certain people we we always hold on to them and and we try to create a good relationship that will last you know a long period of time so that you know everyone yeah. can benefit from it and then you sort of you know reduce all the stress and negativity in the process so totally. yeah, I, I, the project goes smoothly so yeah so uh, obviously um yeah I, I wanted to ask you about a funny or weird experience with builders but i think this, this, that, that's, yeah, this that's, that, that's a weird one already so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's that's yeah that's that's the one that's i uh, yeah and on top of this as well um they were not even aware of like the the, the right certificate certification to to provide at the end of the work and i'm like guys like i need like, it was like just simple, really so basic you know and and I was like, you need to provide the, the minor work certificate for for because you had a socket or whatever, and 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 they they, they got back and they said no, we don't. And I'm like, yes, you do need. And I'm like, you are an I an I C I E uh, E I register. And like I mean, like yes, you do have. And like it just like t took like five or six emails just to prove them wrong. And I'm like, uh, seriously, yeah, this it's is crazy. It's so, just for so, like so something what... that simple. What would you do like uh, otherwise in, in this scenario? So obviously, you know, you had these builders, you thought that they were great, and mm -hmm. what, what what would you do like if, for example, if this uh, situation presented itself tomorrow, and you would be, uh, you know, at the stage where you sort of, you know, deciding whether this builder is good for the job or not? What is there anything you would do different to uh, to to make sure that you sort of, you know, you get to know them a little bit better than? Yeah, like I had references, like what is normally I always ask for reference because I yeah. think it's it's, um, it's a great it's a great way actually to like I mean word of mouth is always the best, um, and I had reference from them, for, not from them but from from people who use them, but I think the people just uh, uh, are not they were not architects they were not qualified and I think they were just like um, like man like building management company you know. Mm. And so they had no clues. They were like, "Oh yeah, they were. We were really happy with them. They redid the painting in the corridor and the electrical and blah blah." But I think in the end, they just didn't didn't. Um, they were not aware of any of any of the the certification or anything. And um and I think the job was a bit um, different. Um, so I think it's 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 yeah. We'll get um, references from the same kind of job that you are actually going to undergo like this. Um, I think yeah. you fuck up yourself a bit better. Yeah, it's probably one of the best ways to be honest. Obviously, if they if they've done a job which which is more or less the same, then yeah. you have a good you you have a good chance that they're gonna do this one good as well. Exactly. Obviously, nothing is a guarantee, but yeah. Yeah, it's um, more, more than likely, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In terms of budgets and stuff, do you, do you do you often go? Um, you know, out of budget, like, do you, do you go, oh, sorry, not out, over, over budget, do you go over budget a lot, or is it just always, like, within the scope you manage to keep everything? I, I, I'm really careful with that, um, but if the clients, you know, like, really often, the clients have something in mind, oh, yeah. then you start, and then they're like, oh, no, but I want this, and I want this, I'm like, sure, we can do absolutely everything, however, this will cost you this, 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 more. Yeah. Yeah. So just be aware of what you said, and I like if they are willing to change 
um, just make sure that this is always written. Um, this is not just a, um, a, a oral agreement because then like when they have to pay it and they, we say, no, we, we, do, we disagree with that. So if you do a, a budget adjustment, just like make sure that this is properly written somewhere. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think you feel it with the client if they are willing to spend more than what they, they say or if they are really within their budget and you know that this they, they won't go further than this, then like you need to be really careful because this is also your credibility that you are playing there. You can't, if, if the person is saying, okay, I have like, I have 10,000 pounds for this. And then you you do a design for 20k. I mean, like, uh, what the point? Like, this is not what they are looking for. This is a waste of time for you as well and money because you would have spent time to develop something that will not be accepted in the end. So I think it's um, it's important to play with the the budget. And if the client is really pushing for something over budget, just to make him really aware of the cost of it. I mm. think that's how do you I, come, do you, I do you come across a lot of uh, customers that might be categorized as a little bit unreasonable when they want to, you know, <laughs> I didn't even have to uh, finish the question. You, you're on it. You're like, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Not all the time, but a lot. I think, I think, um, I, I think it's also again, all, all back to a lack of, of knowledge or not maybe a lack of knowledge, but like, they, they forget some cost, for example, you know, like when you redo a bathroom, okay, you have the cost of the tiling, the work, the paint, the new basin, um, the feature, the fixtures, etc., etc. But you need to get rid of, of your old kitchen, of your old bathroom. That yeah. costs money. You need to remove the waste. That costs money. And this is something that people completely forget about. So I tend to talk about this really early on the process mm -hmm. because um, this is adding a few a little bit of money to the budget. Yeah. Do, do any of your clients say, well, okay, well, I can do it. And then they sort of do 10% and they're like, oh, no, I'm tired. You got to get someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, no, it, yeah, it, I think it happened at, it happened one or twice, but like uh, most of the clients I have now are like, nope, we don't want to touch on this. We're fine. Do it. Like after the people do it for us because we know we're going to, make a mess out of it so and um yeah, yeah. and i don't want i don't to be honest like i if i if if they touch any plumbing or anything i tell them like then you need to you will be responsible for that you know because absolutely yeah, yeah. um th let's talk about our favorite subject uh nowadays which is obviously COVID 19. And? so how did how did it affect you personally and your business uh personally um like for me, like the, the, the worst is like the gym closure. <laughs> and, okay, uh, right. <laughs> now, because normally I go to the gym every morning before starting my day. So this, this has been quite of a pain in uh, exercising. Have you adapted? Have you, have um, you adapted? Yeah. Did you post at home? Oh, yeah. No, but first thing I bought when the lockdown one started was all the gears. So I have everything. I have kettlebell, dumbbell, Good. everything at home before it was out of stock. <laughs> but... Uh <-huh>. uh, <laughs> But so yeah, like I exercise outside for a while, but then like in February it was like just impossible. And I actually just restarted. Um, it's been two weeks now, four degrees in the morning, but still going, so it's fine. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Um, but except that, uh, business-wise, for me actually, it it, um, it was it was quite good because of the the online design. It um, it didn't slow down, and actually it it bring me more business. Um, because people spend so much time at home that they want to change their interior. That's right. So it was uh, a complete, um, yeah, it was really positive actually for for us, I think. And I think for you guys as well. I think you've been busy too now. Uh, very much so. We were, we, we keep, well, I keep saying the same thing. We're, the, we're one of the lucky ones because obviously our, yeah. our industry keeps going strong. It was a very little sort of, uh, dip you know in march where people were sort of on the fence they didn't know what to do whether they want to go ahead with their projects or not so we had a bunch of contracts uh, can cancelled in march and april 
Yeah. And then obviously people were just waiting for the prime minister to say what's going on. And then over time, obviously people started to get uneasy. They're like, okay, well, how, how, how much longer do we need to be inside? We can't get on with our lives. We want to socialize and do this and that, whatever. And then so... Um, I think things started picking up middle of summer. It wasn't nothing like a normal summer because summer is our season. So everyone's like, you know, we're flat out in summer like any other yeah. know, builders. Um, and so uh, we didn't have that at all, but we're still, but we're still busy uh, uh, to probably, I don't know, probably 50% capacity of what would normally yeah. be. But then as soon as um, it sort of, we, we went into autumn, so it was like September, September, October, people like completely, they're like, that's it. We're not waiting anymore. We, yeah. we want to go ahead with a lot of stuff. And we just started signing up more customers and, and uh, things start picking up and then they've been picking up and picking up. And uh, we thought there'll be like a, a little dip um, in December because obviously December, yeah. January, it's pretty quiet in construction. Um, not, not a lot of people want to sign any contracts. They want to go on holidays and things. And obviously uh -huh. this year, not many people it's could do, do that. Uh, un uh, unless it's under false pretenses they have a dental appointment in Turkey or something. <laughs> uh, so uh, a lot of people just stayed in and then, you know, they'll, they'll, they probably thought to themselves, well, let, let's be efficient. Let's let's do something that, that will benefit yeah. us now. And then, so, yeah, we went through, like through December, January, February now. So February's gone. So it's, we're in March already. So it's uh, kind of spring, right? So yeah. it's still bloody cold outside, but it's kind of spring. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, with, with, you know, in our case, it was amazing. Everything sort of, you know, picked up really quickly. You know, if we compare ourselves to any other industries, you know, we are definitely the most luckiest on the planet right now. Well, obviously, technology, uh, technology related stuff, uh, gambling, probably gambling is doing really yeah. well because obviously everyone's at home just like spending all their money trying to win jackpots and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, hospitality are the most. Uh, the, the most in trouble now so restaurants and and and, and entertainment businesses and cinemas and all kinds of no, places like okay. that they're, they're like uh, i think there'll be a lot of uh, available um property for sale and for and for rent uh when when everything's gonna finish completely yeah i think that's gonna be uh yeah i'm really curious to see how how london is gonna look like actually after after this because i think a lot of restaurants and 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 bars are going to have to close, actually, because uh, I don't see how they're going to survive after such a long time of, of closure, actually. And um, yeah, yeah we, we've been lucky. That's that's for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And they've, they've been closing. They've been closing quite quite a lot because uh, yeah. we're, we're based in um, in London, in Ealing, uh, Ealing, yeah. Ealing Borough. And then so we are, I have a few restaurants around here, which I, 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 I used to like a lot. And one of them was actually a French, but thankfully they're still working. So very good cuisine, and I love that place. But the other, the other places they did close. There was like uh, Carluccio, obviously went bankrupt. So it's a massive chain of restaurants went completely bankrupt. So it's a massive Italian chain, and then there was a bunch of others. But yeah, there, there's a lot of businesses, and and they just sort of you know, I mean, there, there's no means for them to actually make any money because they of can't. They, you know, they, they need physical presence of someone to be you know. And the rent are so high as well. So it's can you imagine? Stuff. Can you imagine? Like, if, if you have, like, I don't know, 20, 20 locations in London, you have to pay the rent still. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously some relief and things like that, but I don't think it's nowhere near enough. And obviously, yeah, that was one of the reasons why the chain went bankrupt. I think they had some problems before, and there was underlying problems with the business. And then the COVID-19 just hit, and it sort of added to the, yeah. to the stress. A lot of air, uh, airlines went bankrupt like that as well. So, like, yeah, struggling course. airlines, they're just like, well, that's it. <laughs> you know, packing up. <laughs> Our planes and let's just park them. But yeah, it's it's yeah, no, no. I think it's going to be a complete different, um, yeah, landscape of of work, and it, it's going to be pick up. But I'm 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 sure it will at some point, you know. But it's going to take a few years anyway. But um, yeah. yeah. Let's see what's going to happen. Whether we're going to go into a deep recession after that. Hopefully not. I already saw what uh, the chancellor uh, said, or was. Uh, um, I don't remember what's his name, Rishi Sunak. Yeah, he said that apparently the I think it was either corporation tax, some tax essentially, it's going up by six percent. So it's nineteen oh. now, and that that's going to be twenty five. But uh, all the so tax gonna, are going to go up. Huh? Oh, say like, that again. I think I think all the tax are going to go up because they will need to pay yeah. for the billions yeah. that they just put out. 
Yeah. So, so they so they, they 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 look nice now where they help everyone, but then <laughs> after a couple of years they'll be like, well, okay, well, you had our support now, give us back, you know, tags, bang, fifty percent on yeah. all income. I think I think I think this yeah I think this is what's going to happen. That's um, so let's see how because that that will affect the market, the property market as well. I think um, so. Yeah. yeah well, well yeah. everything. Yeah. And. Uh, in terms of your house, so obviously you said that uh, you managed to buy some uh, equipment for for your gym and things. Uh, do you, is is there anything that you would uh, sort of you missing in your in your house? Is there anything? Is there any room for like improve a garden? Yeah, a lot of people. Are you yeah. Is that a flat that you live in? Yeah. Yeah. So the flats, it's uh, unfortunately that's that that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. That's. Do you, do you have like a park near, nearby at least or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Luckily, like, yeah, luckily we have a park not far. Um, so that's all right. So go and I have a dog anyway, so I have I have to take the dog out. Um, that's good. Yeah. So so that's that's uh, yeah, he's not really happy to be at home like what the time to be honest. No. But, uh, yeah. yeah. No. So so at least we have we have we have a few parks around, so that's um. That's okay, but uh, still, I think it's just still nicer when it's your own. <laughs> you know, well, of course. Yeah. So yeah, that's a lot, a lot of people. A lot of people with houses. So back back in March 2020, a lot of people uh, started to appreciate their gardens much more because when they yeah. went into lockdown and they were like, "Holy crap! Like we have we have we have a beautiful garden now. We can actually use it." Before it was it wasn't of value at all. And it was yeah. funny because uh, all the f fencing panels uh, went out of stock straight away, so no one can <laughs> buy any any fences because people just start like going mad on them. These and paintings. I, I remember lockdown one. There was no paintings. You couldn't find paint in, in like in in Leyland. There was no paint left. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wow, yeah. crazy. But what, what the, the funny part? Uh, obviously, that happened, and then the 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 stockpiling of uh, groceries. Obviously, people start doing yeah. that. And I was actually speaking to Raquel about that the other day. Uh, you know the 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 beer Corona, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so so there was like a funny video online. That so like there was like a whole aisle of beer completely sold out, and there was still <laughs> two pallets of Corona standing in the corner. Like people thought that's gonna that's gonna kill them or something. Oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a bit uh, crazy. But it's funny. <laughs> that's killer. Not, totally not the Corona beer. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, in terms of advice, what what kind of advice would you give to someone wanting to pursue a, a similar career to yours? Um, it, it's actually really funny because I have a lot of uh, young um, architect wannabe who contact me uh, to know what they should do, and, oh, really? and uh, yeah, Amazing. and I, I always I always really welcome them. Like really, um, I always or arrange a chat with them because I know how. It's it's so difficult when you're 18 years old. You're gonna start like those studies are really long. I mean, I study for six years. It's um, you don't really know when you're 18. You know, it's a bit uh, it's a bit difficult. Um, so yeah, always always take time to have a chat with them. Um, if for for this is what I told them normally. If you're looking to work for those big firms like um, Zaha. Um, even Jean Nouvel or um, Herzog and Demeron, or like th those big star architects, you know. Um, so the easy, I didn't do that, <laughs> but the easiest for, for example, to get to Zaha, it's to study um, at the A A in London because like they have this, they have uh, their studio there. Right. So then like. So, so you get to step in the in the company a bit easier because then you can have an internship there, and and it's just make your your way in a bit uh, a bit better. If you want to work to work for for OMA Remcolas, um, better to go to or do an exchange program in his in his school in Netherlands. Um, if you want to go to Herzog and Demeron, go to Switzerland um, because they have their studio there. So because they tend to hire. Um, their student first, I mean, because they see their work. Uh, so it's a bit uh, easier for them as well. Um, if not, uh, just make sure that um, you prepare your, your portfolio really well. You know, <coughs> I still have my first portfolio of my first job application. I found it back the other day, actually, when I was, oh, when I was studying. And it was so cute because like, I was not really into AutoCAD yet. Um, and like, it's a lot of and like, things done by hand and stuff. And 
I was like, wow, like, it, like, yeah, I was like, oh, wow, I did this project and this, this is, I think this is really valuable stuff that you need to keep for the rest of your life because then like you look back at it like 13 years later and you're like, wow. Yeah. Okay. You should um, frame it and put it on the wall. <laughs> it's what my mom wants to do. With <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but I have it, so I keep it. Like, I think my children will, uh, will have fun with that. Uh, but uh, no, just like um, also... Um, try to get in touch with people. Um, um, look at the, 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 the upcoming company. I mean, like BIG is like, uh, and I mean, like in London, they are they are hiring a lot. Uh, they have a lot of mm-hmm. projects going on. Um, try to go there, like uh, even like to spend like um, a week for free. Like just just ask if you can if you can just go and discover. It's always it's always good to get in touch with people who are there because if you have a good contact, then they will. Um, they, tw- they can invite you even for a day or so. Like, you know, I think it's important to get in touch with the people to target the companies that you are interested in. <clears throat> if you want to work for that, obviously, like, you need to know a lot of uh, parametric 3D stuff. So, like, work on this um, early on in your studies, I, I guess. Um, I also think it's important when you do your, your first few jobs, um, if you don't feel the place that you are in, just leave. Like, mm. Don't stay for like the six months or three months that you have to stay. I, I have been in this situation actually um, when I was uh, doing my uh, just, just I was doing my registration and I, I in France and I had to do um, a bit of work experience in France. So I went back to Paris and I started in a company and it I, it was it was horrible. And I was like uh, the project was terrible. The, the, it was dodgy and I was like, oof. Um, and so I left, I left after three weeks. And actually right after that, I I found an amazing job with uh, with Paul Andreu and um, I got an amazing experience, an amazing project. And so I think don't be scared just because like you want to have an experience on your CV to get stuck in something that you don't like. I think it's important to, to go to a company that you like and this is how you start building your your experience, I guess. Yeah, just don't settle for anything less than great, right? Yeah. And uh, obviously, you you mentioned internship, and I think that's like one one of the major things that like young people sort of just discount because it's 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 obviously you know no one wants to work for free, right? And, yeah. Um, but but it's a, it's a, it's an amazing opportunity because um, you know most of the time people are going to let you in and 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 sort of show you the ropes. And exactly. even, even if you don't like it, you can you can always leave. Like you said, you don't like it after two weeks or two days or two hours for that matter. Just leave. Yeah. And uh, and at the end of the day, they're literally opening the doors and showing how the business works, how yeah. things are, like what you need to learn, what you need to understand, what software is. And mm. I, I think that that's the most um, valuable experience you may get. Imagine if you didn't go to the university for six years, but instead you had a six-year internship. Do you think you would learn more? Uh, like, I, I reckon you would. Ah, definitely, definitely. Like one of my teacher at uni, I remember always told us, and I think I, I still have this advice in my in my head. Always told us like you won't be an architect until at least you're forty years old, because like your study is only like ten percent of the knowledge that you will need to 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 have to do this job. And it's it's so true. I mean, like you learn you learn every day on site. Like I mean, like who can know every, every, you you can't know about everything. Like and I think you need to be in this kind of of attitude as well. You need to always be willing to to learn and like don't act as you know everything because like I am I'm definitely not like that. I, I have to learn from from you guys. I have I'm learning from like some CPDs that I'm attending. I'm learning by reading stuff from mm-hmm. um I, I when I start working, I met um, um, like one of the associate from from Adidas was a, a German guy, mm. um, and he was so good, and he had so much knowledge about details, you know, construction details, and I I I learn about this guy for so many years and how to draw proper detail and how it works, and I mean, and like 13 years or 14 years later i'm still in touch with this guy and like i remember once i was at za and i was like oh it's called tobias and i remember i sent him a little whatsapp message and i'm like hey tobias you remember when we did we did this detail for the for the xrl station in in hong kong what was the thing that we used for that and like straight away he replied to me you know and i mean like this is i think this is yeah you get you get knowledge from 
you feed yourself with the people that you surround yourself with as well. And um, and I think Absolutely. this is a valid advice for, for your, your whole life, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, in terms of your surrounding, you need to pick and choose who you are hanging out with, who you're working with. And uh, having a, me a mentor of some sort, so a mentor can be anyone who has yeah. more experience than you. So whether they they want to uh, intentionally mentor you, or or it's up to you to just soak in all the knowledge, you know, whatever, anything yeah. works. So even if just you know watching video online of people yeah. that you want to be like, for example, that that's amazing. You know, the, obviously back in the day, twenty years ago, even fifteen years ago, you didn't have YouTube. Yeah. So now <laughs> you can literally on any any subject you just like type in and you get so many videos and you can actually see what's rated you know high what's going to be useful and I, I mean you know obviously the age of technology is amazing and we're the lucky ones that, that we're actually in it and not in the middle ages right yeah no totally no there is so many um accessible sources of of knowledge now like just just use them just just go for it you know and you can get in touch with people so much in it's so much easier than before i mean like uh, in when i was younger it was like you had to pick up your phone and you had to go there i mean mm. it was a, bit of a different mm. story than like sending a dm on instagram you know <laughs> so, it's a bit um yeah yeah, communication is uh, very, very easy nowadays, like you said, you know, and um, if, if you want to get in touch with a, you know, a professional, you know, LinkedIn is probably the way to go. It's like the yeah. easiest thing to do, you know, comment on their posts and things like that. People yeah. uh, notice you really quickly. Try to call them. No one's going to pick up the phone or no one's probably going to uh, reply to email, but they will respond if you're like, you know, if you're on a social media, because obviously social media is it, that that's what it's all about, isn't it? So I, yeah. I think a lot of people should, uh, you know, look into that. So if there's like a big company, if like I don't know, if, if you want to work for Microsoft, go to LinkedIn, find all the people yeah. working for like from LinkedIn, find the relevant department you want to work, and then just ask the question, hey man, like I want to work in this department. Is there any chance you can sort of give me an internship or, yeah. or put me in, in touch with someone that can do that? Or, or even just have a chat, like, can I just like, can you give me a few advice? Like, will it, will it be okay if we can just have like a 30 minutes um, uh, phone call, you know, like, mm. like get all the, all the insight you can actually. And, and just like, um, just don't, don't be rude to people. <laughs> and you no. them the first time, like I had a guy the other day who just like sent me a message and I was like, uh, excuse me, but like, uh, I normally always welcome people, but I was like, and the only thing I replied to him, I was like, just simple advice, just don't approach people this way. Like just prepare your speech a bit better. And 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 what did he say? I don't he was just like like almost like hey mate, you know? And that was a hey, 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 like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, well, uh, you you're 17 years old, or and I was like, just, yeah, just like I think if you want to have a positive reply, just be a bit more um prepared <laughs> with what you're looking for you know yeah. but uh but if not like i always always give time to to younger younger people who connect with me i think this is extremely important because um some people helped me when i was younger so i think this is uh this is really important to do that as well if you can yeah. it's your time to give back now exactly yeah, absolutely. And I, I think most people are like that. I think like a lot of people, for example, with uh, ego, especially, you know, they, they like when people come to them and, and they'll do the, the utmost to actually help you and, and, and try to part wisdom. So I, I think a lot of people think that they're going to, you know, other, other people are going to say no. But in fact, a lot of people yeah. will take the time to, to put the time in um, or reasonable amount of time just to explain what's what. Like we, we, we had uh, we had like journalists calling us and asking, oh, can you like participate in this story or give us uh, some advice on this aspect? And we're like, of course. And, it, and, and and it's not like generating anything. It's nothing to do with money whatsoever. But it's just, you know, someone asked you for for a favor and then why wouldn't you help them? You know, it's, it's, it's just a human human interaction, right? I totally, I totally agree. Yeah, I have actually quite a lot of people who, who contacted me on. Uh, I, I just started my Instagram. It's been only only on for, since uh, Christmas, but I had few people who contacted me and asked me like how I did this and that. And I always reply, you know, because I contact also the people because like, I have no idea of my. I had no idea of marketing until a few months ago. <laughs> so, so I think. Um, well, 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 welcome to this world. It's it's a fun yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So like I'm, I'm discovering every day, so yeah. it's good. 
Yeah. No, I mean, it's just about putting yourself out there and then the, the right people are going to reach out in time. So that's, that's essentially it. And yeah, uh, it, I think that's how it is. Yeah. So in terms of uh, current situation in the UK, um, how do you feel about the stamp duty holiday? Obviously, that, I think you're aware of that, right? So that they yeah. abolished it until March the 1st, but I think yeah. now they're saying that they might actually extend it, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm, 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 not, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if they're going to extend it till June. The problem is that um, um, that was great. Um, however, uh, the, the, the bank didn't really follow because now uh, there's so many people who applied for mortgages that there is a backlog in the mortgage. There is. So, um, so basically, before you were able to to buy your flat within like uh, eight to twelve weeks, that was yeah. like quite fast, you know. And now it's like over six months sometimes. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just like really crazy. And like I was reading an article the other day, was saying that people like they think that only fifty percent of the people who apply for their mortgage in Jan will benefit of the stamp duty holiday. Yeah. Because of this backlog. So um, it's a bit of a tricky situation. And also like they increase the the the, the mortgage um, interest a little bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like okay, you win on the the early day, but then like you lose a little bit on your on your mortgage, uh, um, and uh, and the one big fat no. deposits now as well. So like, if you have ten uh, percent deposit, it's not big enough. So you need to have fifteen. So in some cases, yeah. even twenty for first time buyers. Uh, I mean, you, you can go with a five percent, but that would be obviously a new, an overpriced new build, and you'll be paying much, much yeah. more. So it's not really um, uh, helpful. But what actually happened? I, I read this today. Um, an accountant, a friend of mine, he sent me that information. And again, it was by Rishi Sunak. Uh, and he uh, proposed that from April 2021, so whoever wants to buy a house, listen up, because this is very important. So up to uh, properties, uh, up to six, uh, up to properties in value of 600,000 uh, pounds. So, uh, so uh, the government will uh, issue um, mortgages that are guaranteed by the government. Oh, yeah, we did. And, and with only 55% deposit. So that's like for some people, if if they you know if they understand what that means, they should jump on it like yeah. like <laughs> crazy. But obviously, make make sure don't overpay for the house. Don't don't go you know because that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to. Is it only for a first time buyer, right? Um, I think yeah, because if you if you if you own a second property, it'll be a buy to, buy to let yeah. automatically. Yeah. Or, I mean, it'll be a second residence. So, no, I, but yeah, I I doubt yeah. it. So I think yeah. for, but what it is, I think if if for example you own a property, um, uh, and then for example you have a friend who doesn't own the property, and you both apply for the mortgage, then you you'll be able to buy the property for five percent still because one of the, one of you is a first time buyer. So again. Uh you know so if if you cuz for us uh, um 5% of 600,000 is 30,000 pounds so plus yeah. the stamp duty it'll be say 40,000 or maybe even less cuz obviously the stamp duty is reduced as well right now <laughs> so you, you need 40,000 pounds to buy a 600,000 house yeah, that's because <laughs> that's very good that's 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 amazing so because literally a couple of months ago you would need about 130,000 for that yeah 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 no definitely so but whoever, the banks uh, are going to have even more backlog. Again. Yeah, they will, they will. But uh, I, I think you know, for 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 people listening to this, you know, if you want to buy a house and you were struggling to yeah. get a mortgage, definitely definitely jump on this opportunity. I think uh, moving forward, you know, uh, years later, people are going to remember this. They'll be like, "Holy crap, this was a really good opportunity to buy a property," because uh, then yeah. they can buy it and you can just rent it out completely, and yeah. then that's going to pay your mortgage. For you sure. Know? And because then, the rent is so high anyway that yeah. uh, you will cover your mortgage. So yeah. So well, when I read it, I was like, "Crap, I'm buying more properties." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yes, yeah. so it's 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 good. Do, do you think that they created a bubble of some sort? Um, it's it's really difficult with this because I think um, there is this plus the Brexit that we don't really know what will be the the, the final out repercussion of this on the market. Um, mm. I think there is a little bubble, but like when you read uh, the different, like uh, Foxton, Zupla, um, I, I was reading some of the some of the um, the articles, and and they they all seems to say that uh, 
um, in 2024, the market will still be high and I could will have taken like 10 or 10 or 15 percent, you know. So it will decrease a little bit um, after the stamp duty holiday. Um, I think, I, to be honest, like, I, I think like uh, who can really know what's going to happen? I mean, like I hope that this vaccine is going to take us out of this situation really soon. And that we will, we will get back to a normal, a kind of normality, you know. But as we said earlier, the, all the hospitality sector as well mm. will be touched. Um, are they going to change some of the the, the, the commercial um, property into residential, especially that now they are changing the planning for that? So apparently, this will be become a permitted development. You will be able to change a commercial to residential. Apparently, this is going to happen as well. Um, yeah, apparently now it's it's still balanced. They are saying um, I don't think it's going to be a massive bubble. I hope not. Yeah. Yeah, going back to COVID, um, uh, obviously everyone's expecting that obviously the vaccine is going to work, everything's going to go go back to normal in June. But um, I, I, I I stay pessimistic just to to lower my expectation because I'm just thinking there's so yeah. many variants now, so many mutations. That like it, it might be we might be at uh, you know uh, step number one again because like obviously a year passed and then now they obviously you know, they've done the the Pfizer vaccine the the other one the AstraZeneca and then so everyone get vaccinated and then after June there there are going to be people still getting sick they'll be like well actually yeah there's a mutation so let's do it all over again so there might be another year yeah well I I hope. I, I, I'm going to try to be a bit more positive than you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have the hope that because uh, the, the AstraZeneca one is a bit different because um, it's targeted for this this variant. But for the Pfizer one, I I hope because it's a new technology of vaccine. That, from my understanding, that you know, like it is working with the the. the the I don't know the word in English for that. The, the genome, the gene thing. So I think yeah. then if you if you if you inject a little thing, then like you can change it. And I think this kind of new vaccine are going to be absolutely amazing for so many other diseases as well. I mean, they were they were under study for 15 years, and um, and the COVID just make them happen a bit faster because they had people to test it <laughs> finally. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I I hope that even if I'm not a scientist and like this, my my understanding is like at this level. That's that's, that's it. <laughs> but, I hope that um, now that they have the base of it, that they will be able to adapt it to all those variants. And then we, you know, it's like the flu every year. It's it's a different flu that we have. And they still have a different vaccine every year. Mm. So I, 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 I want to hope that because I don't want to be stuck another year. No, I know. I know. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping as well. Don't get me wrong. I hope everything's going to go back to normal. But. I, I always I'd, I'd rather expect the worst and then yeah. if, if if the best is, is to happen I'd be you know I'd be over the moon happy you know but uh, uh, how how can um, customers and and obviously people who are interested in speaking with you uh, reach out to you and, and get in touch uh, so either they can go on my website or they can go on Instagram. There is the link to my to email or just DM me. There is the link to my website as well on the Instagram. Um, uh, yeah, and just send me a, an email or, the, or my email is info at millimeterarchitecture.com. So um, I always reply, I always get back and uh, normally arrange a little um, chat over the phone because it's always easier to speak over the phone for for a little while to know what they are looking for and what type of packages or custom um, service we can we can make for them. So, yeah. Wonderful, Just wonderful. Perfect. All right, Pauline, thank you very much for your time. We thank wish you. you all the best in 2021. Let's hope that will be COVID free year and your business is going to boom and uh, you, you can so work much. all around the world. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really fun, actually. Perfect. Thank you, Pauline. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. I'm, I'm sure uh, Raquel's going to incorporate that later, right, Raquel? <laughs>